Well, hey, everybody. Good to be with you today. Hope you're having a great week or looking to have a great week. And, uh, uh, you know, as we um, just enjoy all that God has given us, uh, our our houses, uh, the town we live in, uh, I was been uh, struck lately by people that have it uh, a lot less comfortable than we do, people who are a lot less fortunate than we are. And I'm talking primarily about the homeless people. When you think homeless people, uh, it might must be talking about Red Deer or Calgary or Edmonton, but I'm actually talking about Sylvan Lake. And uh, that we have, um, we have a bit of a problem that's growing, and I believe that we can do something about it, as does uh, Heather Donald, who, is, uh, who leads our Mercy Connect ministry at ACC. So I want to interview her today, and uh, so we could hear a bit more about what she's thinking, about what she's dreaming, and about where we could possibly go and make a difference to bless uh, Sylvan Lake. So uh, let's go to Heather now. Oh, hey, Heather, how are you doing today? I'm just peachy, thanks. How about you, Tim? I'm really, really good. And good. Uh, <laughs> just uh, appreciate all that you're doing around the church, especially in Mercy Connect. And uh, you're, you're so much more than that. You're so much more than that, that one role that you have. You're just, you're an encourager, you're a prayer warrior, you're a team player, and I love all that about you. So thanks for being you, Heather. Thank you. <laughs> hey, I want to talk about, we got some, a real, well, it's a cool thing that, that, maybe a cool door that's opening, but difficult for why this door is opening. So um, we're looking at a possibility of doing some housing for homeless youth in Sylvan right. Lake. Right. Now, people would say, there's no homeless youth in Sylvan mm -hmm. Lake. That's a Red Deer thing. That's a Calgary thing. What do you know about that? <coughs> well, it's a universal thing is what it is. And uh, little Sleepy Hollow, Sylvan Lake, has the same problems as the big cities and the medium-sized cities. And some of you may remember uh, two or three years ago, I can't remember which, I happened to mention that I found out that there were 10 homeless high school kids at HJ that year. And that just shocked all yeah. of us, I think. Um, well, now in, in collaborating with, we have this wonderful collaboration thing going on in Sylvan Lake. It's just incredible. And we all work together and we all share resources. And when I had lunch with um, um, the school wellness worker at HG, we were just catching up about stuff. And um, he mentioned that he had, and we were talking about the, the youth, the homeless youth or the, um, the, uh, um, the, the shelter insecure kids because mm -hmm. some are not completely homeless and he has 25 that he is concerned about in school this year wow. that's more yeah. than double and f 12 to 14 of them are basically homeless couch surfing um you name yeah. it and I was gonna answer, what, does that, what does that look like because we don't see people living under bridges we don't have any bridges but, you know, we don't maybe see homelessness. What does homelessness look like? Well, it means a lot of different things to different people. Uh, and every kid experiences it differently. But many of them, for whatever reason, it's not safe to go home or they've gotten kicked out or it's just not working at home. COVID has accelerated some of that and increased some of mm -hmm. the numbers i believe because a lot of parents themselves are struggling and have checked out and families have disintegrated and kids have been basically in some cases left to their own devices and either going home is not a safe place at the end of the school day um, or they can't go home for whatever reason and so a friend will say well my mom says you can sleep on our couch tonight mm. And that might work for a couple of nights, but of course, you know, that wears thin really quickly. Yeah. And so then it becomes another coach and another coach. And just because a kid is sleeping on a friend's couch doesn't mean to say they're being fed with the rest of the family. Wow. Which is pretty amazing. Um, yeah. But, you know, money's tight for a lot of people. And uh, yeah, we're not all behaving as well as we could. Um, so it looks different for some, and some kids go into um, Red Deer, into the youth shelter. Okay. okay. Um, and we have a shelter here, a mixed gender youth shelter here, but those kids can only get in there if they have been taken into custody by Child and Family Services. Mm. 
Okay. So okay. that's a route that obviously is not a pleasant route, right? Right. So yeah. we're we're yeah. we're we're talking to people well before that so comes most of the time. Twenty five kids. Um, how do you? What can we? What can we do? Is there anything we can do? Um, well, of course, we can always pray and we collaborate as much as we can, and we get permission from our from our guests that come to us. We get permission to talk to other people or agencies in order to get them the very best resources, and that's essential because if they are going from one enclosed conversation to another enclosed conversation to another one, then very little gets solved. And so nowadays in Silver Lake, that's not happening. Yeah. Um, so so that's good. Um, some of the kids, five of them, I believe, of the 12 that are really shelter insecure, we already know five of them because they're getting a touch through youth. Okay. And so Michael is doing an amazing job of keeping in touch with some of those kids. Mm. And then I'm meeting their parents or maybe the kid themselves. And so there's those multiple connections. Um, and so we we are able to speak into some of those lives and, and, and to have deeper conversations with some of those kids about, you know, what they're feeling, what they're struggling with, why things are, why they think things are happening and, and what they want to fix. Yeah. Right. Now you, um, you said there was maybe uh, um, a couple options of things that we could do like really practically. I mean, I know I'm not that prayer is not practical. That's huge. Right. To pray for these kids. And of course we don't know their names and we shouldn't know their names, right. but some very practical things. Two of them, you said one of them um, and I'll, I'll, I'll just say them and then let you explain. Yeah. Them. One of them was a, a, a house where we could shelter kids. Right. The other was possibly um, having kids come into our homes. Right. So tell me about those two things. Okay. Well, I'm going to deal with the first one first. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we have an example of youth housing from Central Alberta Youth Unlimited, who run Timber Coffee Shop here in town. They, five years ago, they started a boys' home, a boys' house in, in, um, Lacombe, where their head office is. And then a couple of three years later, they started a girl's house. And um, there's, well, I won't go into the reasons as why they started the boys' house first. But um, so we have, they've had six years to sort of get the kinks out and, and figure out how to do this well to have as lasting a benefit for these kids as possible. Right. Yeah, and so cool. the beauty of that is that we collaborate with them all the time and they've shared all that information with us. And so if we were to open up some spaces for kids, some supervised, healthy, safe spaces for kids, we would not be starting from scratch mm -hmm. and we would have good people that could come alongside us and, and help us with that in lots of lots and lots of different ways. So the first thought is, um, well, let's back up. My prayer and my dream is that when we look at our land and we start looking at a, a plan for the land up, up the road, up west of us, that we we think about putting some a permanent boys' house and a permanent girls' house there. Mm. And, and, and the beauty of that is that as part of the model that we would tweak based on CAYU is that the kids would then have an opportunity to also perhaps work on the site. They would not only be looking at helping looking after the house, they would have chores to do those sorts of things. They'd have a curfew. They'd have to be home for meal times, and um, uh, those sorts of things. And they would get help with homework if they needed it. They would get counseling if they needed it, but they'd have an opportunity to run the right on more and cut the grass, you know, Right, 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 right. This week, you're in charge of the grass. Next week, you're in charge of something else, that sort of thing. So learning some life skills and learning some responsibility and those sorts of things, because any of that stuff, as you know, um, helps get anybody, whether they're a kid or an adult, outside themselves, yeah. right? Yeah. 
transferable yeah. skills for sure. Exactly. And they're not thinking about themselves all the time. They're thinking about what they're doing for other people. Yeah. And so that would be the optimal thing. And then the idea came up also about, well, what about um, if people adopted a, a teen right. and brought them into their home? And that could be they have a spare bedroom because they're empty nesters. And they um, so they they get matched with an appropriate teen and they bring them into their home for the school year and do that same sort of thing. Um, or the lesser part of that, but just as important would be adopting a kid for barbecues and going to the lake, going boating, going fishing, whatever the family does, right? And just doing it for family time. Those are a little risky because they're a little harder to manage yeah. and we're never ever sure entirely um, you know what's going on with a kid and so we don't want to create um, hazardous environments for a kid or, or for a family so that goes to be a in my mind a, a, a late second choice right right so the right. first choice would be to get a house Right. Like you said a house with maybe five or six bedrooms. Right. We have a mentor that stays in the house and right. lives with the kids. And and then each kid would have their own room. Right. And then they'd have to, yeah, they, it would cost them. Right. And yeah. of course, things that are free, sometimes we don't appreciate them. Yeah. Um, so again, the CAYU model is that you have to be either in school full time um, or working. Right. And so there's a, um, there's a room and board cost that right. comes off. And if a kid is in school, then they're, they would apply for the learner's benefit, which is a provincial benefit that helps um, youth who are on their own away from home finish school. Cool. So it, it pays them every month, except during the summer. It pays them every month enough to, you know, rent a room and feed themselves and get to and from school and that sort of stuff. So the rent would be 90% of that somewhere in there. Give them enough pocket money to have some fun, but not enough to do stuff they shouldn't be doing. <laughs> that's how Jennifer treats me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, that's so great, Heather. I know we're kind of in the beginning of stages of that and kind of dreaming this through and thinking about it. And I think um, right now the big thing we do is pray. Pray for you as you continue to navigate these relationships and these, uh, um, these ideas. Uh, pray for uh, literal doors to open mm. so that we can find uh, room for kids to um, get off the street, get out of uh, be in a safe environment, right. and finish school well. So yeah, um, I think that's fantastic, Heather. And I just appreciate you for uh, for getting for dreaming this and going with it. And uh, oh. yeah, well, I think the, I've, this has been on my heart for a couple of years, having you know, knowing that there was a problem and it's an increasing problem, but I feel that the Holy Spirit has really um, urged us to step out and things are starting to fall into place wonderfully. So our prayer is that the right house mentors come forward, that we find them the right people because that 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 uh, fit is, is so essential. Absolutely. Bible-believing, um, loving people. And then the second one is that the, the right houses with the proper master suites, maybe two master suites, whatever, so that the layout is appropriate for for what we need. And I just know that God has his fingerprint on those all those items too. That's great. And if people yeah. want to talk more about this, they can contact you, right. Heather at alliancecommunitychurch.ca. And, uh, and they can talk to you more about that or grab you at church and have a conversation or whatever. Right. And I'll so put a letter out. I'll put a letter out soon to uh, okay. everybody. Perfect. Thanks, Heather. Thanks for all that you're doing. Appreciate you so much. Thanks. God bless. Okay, Bye. 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 Well, that was uh, great. Very encouraging and uh, great opportunities for us to do something to make a difference in the lives of kids. And you know what? Regardless of the reasons for uh, needing shelter or having that insecurity or being homeless, uh, it's, it's complicated and it's traumatic for the kids. And we love our kids. And each one of them has so much potential. The key is to give them a safe place to get back on track and know that there's hope for their dreams. That's what we want to do. And if this resonates with you, 
then again, I would encourage you to talk to Heather. Uh, you can email her at heather at alliancecommunitychurch.ca. You can talk to her at church. You can call the church, set up an appointment to meet with her. Uh, maybe you want to give towards this house or uh, maybe you want to be a mentor in the house or whatever, something like that. Maybe you want to provide meals. Uh, but something inside you is just resonating for that. Uh, I would ask that you continue to pray as we uh, plan and work this through. Um, but we're excited about what God's going to do. So, um, yeah, so I hope you have a, a really good week, um, that God continues to minister to you and lead you in all that he wants you to do. Have an open heart. Be ready to say yes to Jesus, whatever he might ask you. And, uh, and we're going to find great joy in that. All right, guys, so we'll talk to you soon. Love being your pastor. Bye-bye.